Spinoza, one of the early thinkers of the Enlightenment and modern biblical criticism, including modern conceptions of the self and the universe. Spinoza's philosophy is considered part of the rationalist school of thought, which means that at its heart it's the assumption that ideas correspond to reality perfectly, in the same way that mathematics is supposed to be an exact representation of the world. Following René Descartes, he aimed to understand truth through logical deductions from clear and distinct ideas, a process which always begins from the self-evident truths of axioms. Spinoza defined substance as that which is in itself and is conceived through itself. Spinoza defined God as a substance consisting of infinite attributes, each of which expresses eternal and infinite essence, and since no cause or reason can prevent such a being from existing, it therefore must exist. This is the form of the ontological argument which is claimed to prove the existence of God, but Spinoza went further in stating that it showed that only God exists. Accordingly, he stated that whatever is, is in God, and nothing can exist or be conceived without God. This means that God is identical with the universe, an idea which he encapsulated in the phrase Deus Siv Natura, God or Nature, which has been interpreted by some as atheism or pantheism. Spinoza argues that things could not have been produced by God in any other way or in any other order than is the case. Therefore, concepts such as freedom and chance have little meaning. The picture of Spinoza's determinism is illuminated by the famous quote in Ethics, the infant believes that it is by free will that it seeks the breast. The angry boy believes that by free will, he will wish vengeance. The timid man thinks it is with free will that he seeks flight. The drunkard believes that by free command of his mind, he speaks the things which, when sober, he wishes he had left unsaid. All believe that they speak by a free command of the mind whilst in truth they have no power to restrain the impulse which they have to speak. Spinoza shared ethical beliefs with ancient Epicureans in renouncing ethics beyond the material world, although Epicureans focused more on physical pleasure in Spinoza, more on an emotional well-being. Spinoza believes in a deterministic universe in which all things in nature proceed from certain definite necessity with the utmost perfection. Nothing happens by chance in Spinoza's world, and nothing is contingent. Spinoza wrote, but Perhaps someone will ask whether women are under men's authority by nature or institution, for if it has been mere institution, then we had no reason compelling us to exclude women from government. But if we consult experience itself, we shall find 
that the origin of it is in their weakness. For there has never been a case of men and women reigning together, but wherever on the earth men are found, there we see that men rule, and women are ruled, and that on this plan both sexes live in harmony. The first kind of knowledge he writes about is the knowledge of experiences. More precisely, this first type of knowledge can be known as the knowledge of things that could be mutilated, confused, and without order. Another explanation of what the first knowledge can be is that is the knowledge of dangerous reasoning. Dangerous reason lacks any type of rationality, and that causes the mind to be in a passive state. The type of passive mind that Spinoza writes about in the earlier books of the Ethics is a state of the mind in which adequate causes become passions. Spinoza's second knowledge involves reasoning plus emotions. He explains that this knowledge is had by the rationality of any adequate causes that have to do with anything common to the human mind. An example of this could be anything that is classified as being of imperfect virtue. Imperfect virtues are seen as those which are incomplete. Many philosophers, such as Thomas Aquinas and Aristotle, would compare imperfect virtue to pagan virtue. Spinoza defines the third and final knowledge as the knowledge of God, which requires rationality and reason of the mind in more detail. Spinoza uses this type of knowledge to join together the essence of God with the individual essence. This knowledge is also formed from any adequate causes that include perfect virtue.